All right, Shalom, Shalom. First off, and for most as always, I want to say, Call on Lam La Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. The Bolanas being to the elder apostles, a great millstone that do rule and teach well. And the Shalom to you, Ankim out there that's pushing his truth through the spirit, through the power, and through the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Okay, so this lesson is going to be titled Bye Bye Babylon. All right. Bye bye Babylon. And uh you know this place is uh it's temporal, man. You know everything here is vain, it's temporal. You know, and we uh you know we uh look for and hastening unto the, the day of the uh, um of Yahweh Shai. You know, the day that this place is you know overthrown, man. You know, and uh you know we're living you know in the last days of the last days. And as things as get quicker toward the end, we are seeing that privacy is, you know, becoming manifest by the day. OK, real quickly, since I did say that just now, let me snag this quick precept. OK, because Babylon is on its way out, man. You know, we're looking at the uh, the signs, the indicators of um, the lead up to the downfall of Babylon. OK. So starting off, this is 2nd Nedrus 9 and verse uh, 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. Okay, and how do you properly measure the time diligently in itself? Now, of course, by watching the elders' apostles' videos, watching brothers' videos, you know, the bishops' videos, you know, the elders out there in Connecticut, you know, ultimately watching all the brothers, right? To stay up, to stay up the par and privacy, you know, constantly watching for articles and you know, staying updated within the the, uh, the the chats that we have in the brotherhoods, you know, just to, you know, constantly be in a loop. So that way you can eat up all the information to uh, to um, to gain the information to, you know, feed the sheep and to warn the sheep. OK, because, because that's, you know, part of our job as being, you know, servants, you know, watchmen, prophets of the Lord, you know, because in order for us to prophesy, we have to say what's going to happen before it happens. You know, that's what the word prophesy means to say before something happens. That's what we're doing. But in order for us to do, to do that, we have to keep watch on things that's going on pertaining to prophecy. Right. And it says, and when thou seest part of the science past, which I told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world, which he made. And that's right. The Lord is doing that. You know, the Lord has, is doing that with, you know, um, uh, uh, Uproars of the people, the Lord is doing that with, you know, uh, storms, for example, like Hurricane Barrel, you know, that hit Texas and, and, and uh, other, you know, cities. OK, so things are happening. OK, it says verse three says, so, 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 yeah, Shai is visiting the earth. OK, even signs as far as like, you know, the blood moons. OK, there was a blood moon, you know, me and the brother had seen it last night and I wasn't aware that. It was even supposed to be a blood moon last night, but me and the brother, we had seen a blood moon last night coming out of the store, and we, it was me and him, and it was sitting very, very low, you know, and, you know, blood moons are also signs of the heavens, you know, signs of the second return of Yahweh Shai. Okay, and real quickly, let me snag that real quick, all right? Because, um, listen, man, I don't care what anybody say, I don't care what, you know, uh, non-believers say. You know, we, we don't care what the hell you people say. Okay, the, this Babylon is about to fall, man. All right? This place of Babylon is about to effing fall. Okay? <sighs> so this is the book of... um. Where is it at? Um, let's see here. Joel 2. Actually, I'm going to get the one in Acts because the one in Acts... Is the uh, Apostle Peter reiterating what the Prophet Joel said? Okay, so uh, I'll get right to the point. This is Acts two and verse twenty. Um, actually, let me start at verse uh, sixteen. Okay, now this is like I said, this is what the Apostle Peter was reiterating what the uh, the Prophet Joel said in Joel the second chapter. So this is Acts two. In verse 16, it says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. 
And it shall come to pass in the last days, right? In the last days, man. And 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 guess what? We are damn sure living the last days, man. Okay, we are definitely living the last days of, of this empire. Okay, this wicked ass system, man. This wicked ass society, right? And it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said the Most High, Yahweh Shai, I will pour out, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Okay, upon all flesh. Okay. So, and recently there was an article on um, uh, endtimeheadline.org. And, um, and you had a lady talking about how she received, you know, signs of the end going to uh, uh, pertain to next year, which is 2025. You know, and actually, Lord is walking through a lesson, uh, you know, uh, um, I, I can do a follow up lesson on that article. And I had skinned it a little bit. And, uh, there, uh, actually, let me just go to the article real quick. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'm just gonna go to uh, go to uh, um, the key points that was stated in the article. Okay, as far as what she saw. Now, let me see if I can search this up just real quick. Okay, just for further edification. Okay, right here. Now, the title of this article says. Um, Woman claims an angel of the Lord showed her four major signs or events coming in 2025. Now, what did you know is said in the book of Acts 2 and verse um, 17? It says, and it says, In the last days, said the Most High, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Meaning, what uh, uh, visions, people getting visions, people getting visions and dreams of, uh, of the end, you know. And I'll keep going in Acts 2, but real quick, let me grab this. And this uh, article, okay. Now, number one, it says uh, the angel said that there will be great civil unrest in 2025. Now, this is according to, you know, what the, uh, you know, what she re received that in um, in her vision, okay. And it says civil unrest, which is ultimately what's you know sedition amongst men, right? And civil unrest is prophesied in the scriptures, okay. We can go to scriptures like. You know, second edge the 15th chapter. Okay, uh, 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 sedition amongst men. You mean go to uh, 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 chapters like Isaiah 19 and 2. Okay, Egyptian versus Egyptian. Okay, so Babylon is already, you know, on the uh, on the uh, decline. Babylon is on, you know, um, on its way out the door. That's why this lesson is titled Bye Bye Babylon. Because we are living the last days of the last days. And Babylon will soon be no more. You know, because Babylon ultimately is being broken down from the inside out by the Lord. Okay. So uh, number one says, and this is uh, the things that the, the lady, you know, um, had in her vision. It says, number one, the angel said that there will be great civil unrest in 2025. The angel said that there will be economic hardship in 2025. Right. E uh, economic hardship. You know, uh, uh, um, um. Uh, financial woes, you know, because right now here in Babylon, people are struggling, you know, because of the Biden administration, you know, uh, uh, inflation, you know, the, uh, the the cost of living, the cost of gas, the cost of everything damn near is, has gone up and people are feeling fill the heat. OK, so economic hardships, you know, and right here it says it's going to be more, you know, pertaining to what the lady saw, what the angel, what the angel of the Lord showed her. Right. Uh, the number the number three it says according to this woman the angel also said that there will be a be famine in 2025 you see and that's also in the scriptures as well the scriptures speak about famine you know and you know the uh the lack of you know bread you know you know and that's also uh you, you can find that also in, in the uh second edge of the 15th chapter okay the the, the lack of goods the, the lack of bread you know, so there's also going to be, you know, famine here in Babylon, but not but not um, only a famine of, of, of actual food and water, but also a famine of hearing the words of the word of the Lord. But it proves the word of the Lord is is the is the uh, the true food that you need. OK, what the house shy say in Matthew four and verse four, when he, when he told Satan, he said he said, um, actually, let me, let me describe this real quick. I don't want to butcher what the house shy said. OK, this is the book of uh, Matthew four and verse four. And it says, but he answered and said, it is written. And I believe it's written in the book of Deuteronomy. OK, 
But he said, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, right? By food, right? But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the most high, right? Because this, um, this word is likened unto a roll, you know, like, like the, uh, like the Lord told Ezekiel, he said, eat, he said, eat this roll, then go teach the house of Israel. Meaning what? Study, get this word, you know, get all the information you need to get through the spirit, you know, through the elders that, you know, we get from our apostles and, and elders and bishops and, you know, uh, and, and our spiritual fathers, right? Get, you know, eat up, gobble all of this information up that we can gain while we have free access because soon this word is not going to be easy accessible, you know? That's why soon it's going to be a famine of, of hearing the words of Yahweh Shema Shai, okay? Let's snag that real quick, actually, man. It's like y'all know I'm all over the place, but Lord's Word is lessons edifying and, and very informative to the Lord's sheep. Okay. So real quick, let's head back to um um well not head back, let's head to Amos 8 and verse 11. And it says, Behold, the day is coming, said the Lord power, that I was in a famine in the land, not a famine of bread. Nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. You see, and that's why it says in scriptures like, for example, Isaiah thirty three and six. That's why it says, wisdom and knowledge will be will be the stability of, of thy times, because because right now what we are doing, the prophets, the servants, the believers, what, what we are doing is getting prepared spiritually before she is the fan. You know, that's why we are gobbling up. The, the teachings of the apostles, you know, the, the words of the apostles, the uh, which ultimately is the words of Yahweh Shema Shai, but the Lord is using those men directly to to uh, to um, exhort us, you know, and to warn us, and to so that way we can, you know, get the information, so that way we can, you know, be, be able to stand in the evil day, right? So it says, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord, okay. And they shall wander, and, that, and, that, and that's going to be a very uh, scarcity thing, okay? Because um, I, I believe in the time of Samuel, there was a time when you know the words of the Lord was very uh, uh, precious; it was very uh, um, rare, okay? So that's how it's going to be, you know, during the the, the famine of the the famine of um, of the word is going to be basically rare. Like people are going to be seeking and looking for questions, because, uh, excuse me, uh, looking for answers because. You know, for, uh, for so long, people out here, you know, they've been partying and bullshitting. But when shit gets real and gets, you know, real hot out here in these streets, you know, when, when, when privacy, you know, unravels, that's when things, you know, are going to click. You know, then then they're going to realize that privacy were among them, but it's going to be too late. So they're going to be searching for answers and trying to see, you know, hey, man, you know, where are those guys standing on, on the corners of the streets? I got to speak to them. Where they at? You know, they're going to be bugging up because they're going to be seeking for answers. OK, but right. But right now, the, the door of, of mercy and repentance has been opened unto our people. You know. But our people, they want to they don't want to take heed. So, hey, when things when fame of the word, you know, uh, uh, um, when fame of the, the of the words of Yahweh about Shema Shai, you know, manifests, then people are going to realize that they they effed up. OK. So back in Amos 8 and verse 12, and it says, And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. Okay? So, hey amen. Like like, like, uh, like the old saying goes, get it while it's hot. Get this word while it's hot, man. This word is like unto unto food. You know, it's like unto unto. It's the living. It's the, uh, uh, um, what is, what is it? Uh. It's the uh, the bread of life, you know. You have a shy, you know. This is his word. This is the role that we must, you know, ingest, that we must consume. Okay. So being that we are in the know, you know, that's a blessing for us to know. Because soon things are gonna happen and it's gonna happen on a grand scale, man. How about Shana Shai is not playing? Babylon is on his last lap. Okay. So back in Acts 2. In verse uh, 17, and it says, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. You see? So people right now, you know, um, are having visions. Okay? Like, for example, 
you know, I believe, who was it? A Balaam. He had the vision, you know, the Lord put him in a trance and he seen the latter end of the nation of Israel. Okay, he seen that we were we were prospering. We, we were on top. We were in rulership. And it's so much that he wished that he would come back to be one of us. You see? So you so you, you don't got to be an Israelite to receive visions. Because it says, in the last day, said the Most High, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. You see? So don't know, so it don't matter if you're heathen or, or or not. The Lord can use that vessel to get his uh, message across, regardless. Okay, and it says verse eighteen, and on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days my out of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will shoot wonders in heaven, above, and the signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Here's the here's the point. Ultimately, it says verse twenty. The sun shall be turned to, into darkness, right? And what just happened? Okay, well, what happened this past April of this year? The great American eclipse. And that was a great, that was a great sign, you know, but these simple-ass Americans took it as something that was just happening in the moment. Just something that was just happening, you know, because of it. No, 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 no. That's happening because we're living in the, in the end, Okay. That was a great omen from Yahweh Bashmal Shai. Okay, and there's been many more, you know, you know, uh, eclipses that happened in the past. But that eclipse was very special, man. Okay, people were that that eclipse was heavy. It, you know, that eclipse literally turned day into night. Okay. And so it says the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood, meaning what a blood moon, right? Before that great and notable day of the Lord Yahweh shall come. You see? So before the, the great and notable day of, of Yahweh shall come, the signs that we are witnesses of, okay, we're gonna see them, you know, and, and, and what's some of the signs? We just we just read some upwards of the people. Okay. Actually, uh we didn't read that, which I, I gotta go back to Edris, okay. But that but that's a sign, upwards of the people, wars and rumors of wars, famines, you know, uh, uh earthquakes, okay. Pestilences, we are seeing these, and these are the signs before you know before Babylon goes down, and that's why this lesson is titled "Bye Bye Babylon." Okay, B B B, you know. So back in um, let's hop back in the book of Second Edges. All right, Second Edges chapter nine and verse uh, three, and it says. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, right? And that's what we've seen. You had the people, the people are, are um, um, up warring about, you know, Palestine and, you know, that whole conflict over there in the Middle East, right? People are, you know, we were seeing, we were seeing earthquakes in diverse places, you know, we are, uh, there every day there's a damn earthquake. I believe last week or like, yeah, last week. You had a a seven point three earthquake in in uh, in uh, Chile, you know, and Chile is you know, Jake, you know, the Northern Kingdom out there, man. So so the Lord is is, is visiting the earth truly, visiting visiting this earth, man. But nobody's realizing that what's happening around the earth that the earth is is because of Yahweh Shmuel Shai. These what we are witnessing is the works of the Lord, man, and nobody's realizing that, but the prophets. The servants and of course the believers, you know, that are, you know, um, that uh, uh call upon the name of the Lord, you know. So this is um uh, verse five, it says, For like as all that is made in the world had a beginning and an end, you see, a mother f an end. Okay, like 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 the old saying goes, all good things come to an end. Okay, for, for so long, man, for so long, Babylon has been on top. Okay, Babylon has been on effing top, man. But it's but it's time for this place to come back to the effing bottom. It's time for Esau to come back to the bottom. Okay, like like the scriptures say, uh, Esau is the end of the world. Okay, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And guess what, man? When I read that precept for the very first time, when I, when I came to the truth. You know, you know, some years back, listen, that scripture, it blew my, it blew my mind. Okay. Because we are, because now we are witnessing the, uh, the, uh, um, the, um, the buildup 
stages of Esau, you know, becoming that end of the world, you know, and him being no more, you know, a ruler in the earth. OK, this world needs new management. So it's better that this place has an end. OK, like, like it says in the book, of, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says better, better is the end than the beginning. OK. So one more time, the second edge nine and verse five, it says, for like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end. And the end is manifest. OK, the end is manifest. Meaning what? Meaning meaning that it's, it's clear that we live in the, in the last days. It's obvious that we're living in the last days of this Edomite empire. OK, you can't deny it, man. All right. You got Esau, you know, um, you got Esau rolling out his, you know, his DPIs, which DPI stands for Digital Public Infrastructures. OK, Esau has a project, I believe, uh, which includes uh, people like Melinda, Melinda Gates, Bill Gates, you know, people of that caliber. Right. We you know we know what they're about. OK, which ultimately they're being, you know, their puppet leaders being controlled by the elites, you know, guys like Elon Musk, you know, Jeff Bezos, dudes like people like that. They're puppet leaders, you know, so but ultimately the, the elites of this world, you know, what they call, you know, the uh, the one percenter. Right. The one percenters, they're in control of everything, you see. But these but uh, Esau is not rolling out the digital public infrastructures. You see, you know, uh, you have uh, pa Pakistan, you know, has one basically. Uh, the uh, the uh, the UK is about to uh, soon, you know, get get uh, um, you know, get into effect with that with the the uh, DPI. OK, so everything is getting is gearing towards the MOTB. Everything is gearing towards digital, you know, digital wallet, you know, digital this, you know, digital that, you know, everything, you know, is is is, is uh, being um, uh, manifested, which ultimately is what prophecy. You see, the MOTB is around the corner. Jiggle Trouble is around the corner. OK, and which, you know, let me remind you this year through the spirit coined by Elder Paul Tahar 2024 um, is what the, the hopeful year of Jacob's Trouble. OK, and there was an article actually, which I got to do a lesson on that, Lord's will. There was an article saying that um, uh, basically, for lack of better words, it was saying that if Trump don't get reelected, then it's a possible, you know, um, it's a possible, you know, um, cause for civil unrest to happen here in Babylon. So we're living in very, very beautiful times, man. OK, so that's why this lesson is titled Bye Bye Babylon, because we're witnessing the downfall of Babylon. OK, and also not only are we witnessing the downfall of Babylon, right? We are uh, we are waiting to be delivered out of Babylon, to be delivered from Babylon. OK, to be delivered from this hellhole, the cesspool of an of a empire. OK, and then we can truly say bye bye, Babylon, because we're going to be beamed up and delivered by Yahweh Shai. OK, deliver out of that destruction, man. And real quick, let me snag that real quick. You know, actually, you know, there's many scriptures going in about the deliverance, but I want to get this one in particular. This is Isaiah chapter 26 and uh, verse 20. And it says, uh. Come, my people, enter down to thy chambers. And who is the Lord's people? The Israelites. OK. And today they're being called what? So-called minorities, which, which consists of what? So-called Negroes, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians. OK. And of course, the, uh, the, the uh, rest of the Israelites, they may look like heathens, but their, their, their seed, their bloodline goes back to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and their spirit bears witness with this gospel. OK. With this gospel, man, was proves furthermore that they are Israelites. All right. And it says, and, and it's enter down to thy chambers. What's the chambers? The chariots. Okay. And shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment, right? Because Babylon's gonna be destroyed in one hour. Okay, I believe that's written in the book of Revelation, 18th chapter. Okay, one hour, this place is going to be destroyed, man. And one effing hour. Okay. And it says, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation, right? The indignation be overpassed. Meaning what? The righteous anger that the Lord has in, has in store for this place. Okay. And ultimately, and ultimately that indignation 
is going to be shown forth through the nuclear missiles, okay? In which the nuclear missiles pertain to the book of Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, I believe the uh, 25th verse, the, the nuclear missiles are the Lord's armory, okay? Because the Lord, he's, he, he's, he's in control of everything, okay? He's, he, he's in control of every little thing, every detail, okay? So it makes sense that the Lord will have, you know, will, uh, um, have uh, um, indignation for this place, man. You know, and the Lord is going to show His, his uh, indignation through what that fiery destruction. Okay, it says, verse um, twenty. I read it again. Isaiah, 20, Isaiah, 20, excuse me, Isaiah twenty six, verse twenty, and it says, "Come, my people, enter down to thy chambers." Right. So you know, a meaning what deliverance. Okay, because before the destruction hits, the elect are going to get beamed up. Okay, as the nukes are falling, the, the elect are going to get beamed up right before that destruction comes. Just, just like in, in, in the time of Lot. You see, as, as soon as Lot got delivered out of Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened? Fire and brimstone rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities. You see? And it says, and shut thy doors as uh, uh, and shut thy doors about thee. Right, meaning what? You know, the... the Obviously, the, the uh, chariots are gonna enclose the elect, so that way they're they're not they're they're, uh, they're protected right by the the, but the uh the destruction. They're gonna get beamed up right, get into the chambers, which is the chariots, and be what protected right. And it says, "Hide thyself." You see, hide thyself as it were for a little moment. And right, what 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 the elect what, what the Lord is doing for the elect is protecting them right. Is uh is uh, um. Uh, covering them from that destruction, right? And it says, hide thyself as it were for a little moment. You see, because Babylon's going to fall quick. And it says, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Meaning what? Until Babylon's finished. Until the destruction has destroyed Babylon. Until the nukes had destroyed Babylon. Until, you know, um, um, until uh, uh, it's done. Okay. So, you know, like the, the, this lesson is titled by by Babylon, you know, you know, we are we this is the last captivity. You know, we are, you know, uh, uh, un, you know, um, we are um, ha hastening and waiting, you know, for the day of Yahweh Shai, you know, for, for the day of privacy to unravel. You see, so, hey, man, we're just waiting to be delivered, man. OK, so with that being said, I just want to say call him La. Hey, and real quick, a. Hey, uh, uh, remain patient. You know, I know. I, I, hey, we suffer right now. We post, it, listen, just like Pops Cabrera always pushes. And it's truth. We are supposed to suffer. So embrace the bitter, you know, and, you know, and, 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 and embrace, you know, the uh, the afflictions, the hardships. OK, because the Lord is building built himself in the spirit. So, so that way, when things actually happen, we can handle it because we have him, you know, to, to, to lean on. You see? So that I just want to say, call lame la, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, and Kakwadash, double honor being to the elder apostles, a great millstone that do rule and teach well. Okay, and then and shall I to Yankim out there that's pushing his truth through, his, uh, uh, through the spirit, through the power, and through the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, and Kakwadash, with all sincerity and truth. Okay, and then shall I want to you, um, uh, um, excuse me, shall I want to uh, you sheep out there? You know, and, uh, and Lord's will, your sheep was edified and uh, and well fed through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. And with that being said, Shalom.